Welcome back to Watches, Whiskies, and Wines, the channel where you guessed it, we explore watches, whiskies, and wines. Today, we're going to explore the Dalmore 15 year, and I think it's going to be a pleasant little treat. I mean, this is part of a series where I'm doing some com comparisons of different types of whiskies, especially from the Dalmore, but you're also going to see something that I've done for the Glamourangy and, and other producers as well. Um, today, we're going to start with learning a little bit about the history of Dalmore. I'm not going to touch on it too much because each video is going to have its own component that's going to bring it all together. Uh, we're also going to look at the presentation in the box. We're going to discuss a little bit about what we think of it after we put it on our palate and our nose. And uh, I'm going to suggest some pairings and then I'm going to give you my final thoughts. And then maybe we'll even touch on a little bit of sustainability, you know, maybe not in this video, but probably further along in this in the series. Who knows? Um, so I want you to sit back and relax, pour yourself a nice drink, and let's get started. The Dalmore has been a long, around for a, quite a long time. Uh, we're looking at 180 years. Their founding was 1839, so they've been around for quite a long period. Alexander Matheson is the one who founded it, and you're going to learn about this 12-point stag in other videos, but we can touch on a little bit now. But this was a royal crest that was given to the family of the Dalmore. Um, you know, which goes a lot further back than Alexander Matheson, but obviously it means a lot because they were allowed to use this from the King Alexander III, and they've used it since on their bottles and their branding, and I think that's pretty cool, and that's a really awesome history to have for your company. Um, Richard Patterson, who's the master distiller there, he imparts a lot of his knowledge and expertise into this and been around for quite a long time. I think it's close to 50 years, and so everything that he touches there basically has his fingerprints and his his ideas in it, and I think that's really nice. Um, what's great about this is they age it for the first 12 years in ex-bourbon um, American oak cast, which, you know, gives us some vanilla, gives it obviously an oaky flavor, and that's what you're going to get initially from the ex-bourbon cast that come from um, America. And then it's going to have awesome, that's really cool later on, it gets divided up, and this is the multi-maturation process that Dalmore has, and what they do is they divide it up, and... Um, they put it in Amoroso, sherry cask. They also put it in um, Apostoles, sherry cask, and then Mat Matusalem, uh Oloroso, sherry cask. And each one of those sherry casks have different ages, and they impart different qualities and characteristics onto the whiskey. With the Amoroso, you're going to get some um, dried fruit. You're going to get probably a little bit of dried nuts and some caramel. You know, that's going to balance out the initial vanilla and oakiness that you get in the beginning. With the apostoles, you're probably going to get a little bit of raisin, maybe even some chocolate, and some spiciness. And that's going to add some depth and layers to it. And with the Matusalem uh, Oloroso Sherry Cask, you know, it's going to get rounded out. It's also going to give you some nuttiness. It's probably going to give you savory flavors, maybe even a little bit of spice. But that rounds out the overall expression and just brings it all together. Um, you know, they're located in the Cromarty Firth, and that's near the River Alness, and that's where they get their cold water from. And as we know, these things are important. Where you're located, uh, where you're pulling your barley from, and the water source. Those are significant into the entire production process and also to the distilling process. And as the year gets warmer and colder, the wood opens up and then it closes. And that is part of the entire process each year. And that's what contributes to the overall distinct flavoring that you're going to get from each and every distillery in Scotland. Um, this is the Scottish Highlands, which is important um, because that brings you even more cold air and it brings you like a special type of protection from any kind of warm air that's going to come in. And once again, it impacts you the entire year. Also affects humidity levels, which uh, that determines how much of the, the angels portion of the, the whiskey is allowed to escape. Um, so the Dalmore is, is pretty special in that regard. Now let's go ahead and check out their presentation. Look at this box. And then see what's inside, you know, and I'm always excited to do that. I know you are as well. Um, the box is nice. I like this dark green. I, I don't know. It looks like a really dark green. Lovely. Green is one of my favorite colors. Love it. Um, it's got the nice, oh, it's embossed a little bit, which is great, as well as it's embossed here with the uh, the 12 point stag. Of course, the silver, very similar to the other boxes. And we'll look at all them next to each other when we do the final comparison. But yeah, I mean, pretty standard when it comes down more, but nice, beautiful presentation. I think it's something nice as a gift. I'm going to read what's on the back. It says, a royal heritage bestowed in 1263 by the King of Scotland. The royal 12-point stag proudly adorns each bottle of the Dalmore, encapsulating the distillery's 
Regal Legacy, The Art of the Dalmor. For over 150 years, the Dalmor has set the standard in multi-cask maturation. Carefully composed spirit and hand-selected cask from the world's finest bodegas and wineries are expertly curated to create a sumptuous and layered whiskey of legendary finesse. And it's age 15 years, the epitome of our house style. This single malt is finished in different styles of aged sherry cask, including, including Apostolis, Amoroso, and Matusalem Oloroso, which is nice. Um, the aroma, orange, marmalade, cinnamon, and nutmeg on the palate, mandarin, vanilla, ginger, and crushed apples. Finishing notes, caramelized orange and rich dark chocolate. So looking forward to that. And what I know about the Dalmore, I'm pretty sure that's correct. So let's go ahead and take a look at this bottle. Love it. I mean, I love the design. Pretty standard when it comes to the Dalmore. Of course, I like how that comes out like this with the metal of the 12-point stag. Um, of course, it's got the green on the top. Green here as well. Very nice. You're also going to see my videos of the 12-year the 14 year and then i'll do a cigar malt and then i also think we're going to do the king alexander version as well king alexander has a little bit of a better presentation and uh you know of course for how much that costs you and the tier is it's going to have a little bit of a better presentation but this isn't cheap either this is still mid-level whiskey right here so let's go ahead and oh, that sounded great it smells great already starting let's go ahead and pour a little bit and the bottle's got a very dark amber to it. You know, I, I, I think it looks lovely. And pouring out as well. And, oh, yeah. Caramel. Yeah, you want to get some vanilla. That young oak. I don't get any nuttiness yet. We'll see if that's on the palate, but... Plenty of sweetness. I mean, it's, it smells pleasant. I have to say that. It smells great. And it's got the darkness of a sherry, so I like that. Let's go ahead and give it a go. Very distinct. Much different than the other expressions in the same series. Um, very sweet. Very much like fruit. Very much like raisin. A little bit of spiciness. Uh, but I would say more like an allspice. Um... I mean, very nice. I love making these these discoveries because I've never actually had the 15 year. So this is nice. Now I'm glad that I have and very happy to share it with you. Thank you for joining me. So I'm going to do some pairings here. I've got some, I think these are butter toffee nuts, like peanuts that are candy. I got some dark cho chocolate cashews, which I think are going to be great. And especially with how sweet this is, I think that's going to balance it out. And then I got some sour cream and onion chips. So I'm going to clear my palate real quick with this. Yep. That was the right thing to do. It's a pretty interesting pairing, honestly. The buttered toffee is a little bit too much to go along with this because this is already pretty sweet. But let's see how this dark chocolate cashew goes. Yeah. Wow. Great. Between the dark chocolate cashew and this sour cream and onion chip, I gotta say that's a great combination. So, final thoughts. Love it. I would say this gets a smoothness probably somewhere around a six and a half, maybe a seven. Um, I think this is going to be part of my collection moving forward. Lovely. Didn't know it was this good and happy that we discovered it together today. I'm looking forward to doing the Cigar Malt as well and then also the King Alexander III. So please be on the lookout for those. I want to thank you for joining me today. You know, always comment, like, subscribe, share. Let me know if there's anything else you want to learn about. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. Take care. Oh,